Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a review of the 2019 science fiction cyberpunk film that is based on the manga of a similar name, as well as the OVA, Alita Battle Angel. Now, this film was directed by Robert Rodriguez, who, to be honest, has had a pretty dubious track record as of late. And it's produced by James Cameron, who has another pretty eh, iffy track record for me personally. It's based on, yeah, the anime called uh, Gunnam. Uh, and there's the uh, OVA, which predated this, which I believe is called Battle Angel. And it stars Rosa Salazar as Alita, Christoph Waltz as Dr. Dyson Ito, Keenan Johnson as Hugo, Ma Maher Shala Ali as Vector, Jennifer Connelly as Dr. Turin, Ed Scrine, uh, Ajax from Deadpool as a Pan. You have Jackie Rahaley who plays the voice of Gorwishka, uh, who's this huge, like, hulking cyborg who is a member of of the uh, the bad guy squad in the film you also have uh jorge lendenborg jr's tanji uh a friend of uh hugo's and a few other actors and actresses including jeff fahey in in a role where he's pretty much unrecognizable i thought he was james brolin because he looks like a spitting image of James Brolin in this movie. But no, it's not James Brolin. It's it's Jeff Fahey. Um, Casper Van Dien has a little bit role as one of Ito's former cyborg patients. Uh, Rick Yoon is also in this as like one of the Hunter Warriors. But like he's just barely in the movie. Like he just has like a essentially a cameo. You also have a, a, a wanted cr criminal cyborg assa assassin named Romo, who is Goriska's um, subordinate, so to speak. And I'm like Romo, the Tony Romo. Like what? What? I think I think the name I think the name was Romo in the in the uh, in the uh, OVA and in the the manga, but I'm not 100 percent sure. But I just I just always thought that was kind of a, a funny sort of thing, like Romo. Uh, um, because when I think of Romo, I think of Tony Romo, the former Dallas Cowboys, uh, quarterback. Uh, but, um, yeah, and you also have Edward Norton, who has a uncredited role as one of, the, as essentially the, the man who's pulling the strings, Nova. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez is also uh, uncredited as Gelda, the cyborg commander who was really instrumental in, in helping Alita in her past uh, life. And then you have Jai Courtney, who plays a motorball champ, a motorball champion, um, which Jai Courtney probably got it because, hey, you know, James Cameron is involved with this, and I think James Cameron likes Jai Courtney. This movie... This is a film I was looking forward to because I really lo I loved the OVA and I thought maybe Robert Rodriguez with an, a chance to do another harder edged comic book style film, he would really excel at that, but he didn't really get the opportunity to do that because this is PG-13. So the, this is a film where Robert Rodriguez and his wild nature which is associated with a lot of his best films is curbed or cut away in favor of trying to appeal to a uh, wider audience and for me personally that's one of the film's biggest flaws is the fact that it doesn't have the edge that the OVA has it doesn't have the grit and the edge that a lot of the more popular and effective cyberpunk films have. Yeah, but this is a very clean and sanitized cyberpunk movie. It's a cyberpunk movie without the punk. So when when you when you it's just a cyber movie. And a cyber movie just isn't as interesting or as engaging as a cyberpunk film. 
And I definitely do feel this is R-rated and it had more graphic violence. I think that actually would have helped the film because it would have created a dynamic that is more interesting. Uh, when you have like this porcelain doll girl, essentially, who's doing all of these violent acts, it creates an interesting uh, dynamic. It creates something unique. Um, when you have her in a PG-13 world, when you have Alita in a PG-13 landscape, it's just not as compelling because it's not as it doesn't have that shock value doesn't have that um badassery and that edge that really makes um the OVA in a lot of ways click so well but another reason why this this is a film to me that is quite flawed is definitely the script which ties into the whole edge you know lack of edge but the lack of edge isn't really the script's fault uh it's involves the producers you know involves the studio 20th century fox and lightstorm who want to make a essentially a teenager's version of alita and the script by james cameron and alita uh is is muddled it's a muddled script, and, and I'm not alone on that. A lot of critics who have reviewed the film have said the same. It's a muddled screenplay. It throws you into the film way too early without any context, into the story, or into the characters. You're just like, what is going on? I don't know anything. But I think, I, think the, I, I think the OVA might have done the same thing, if I remember correctly. But it felt like it still explained things a little bit le better as it went along than this film did this movie also feels like in terms of its plot and its story like a young adult version of alita it feels like oh this is the alita for teenage girls it's a teenage girl power fantasy and complete with the romance and everything with a cute boy and it just doesn't work and another and, and a big reason why the romance angle doesn't work is there is absolutely no chemistry between Rosa Salazar and and uh, Keenan Johnson, and that really hurts the film a lot because there's a really the emotional core of the film in a lot of ways is Hugo and Alita's relationship, and it falls completely flat on its face because there is no believable uh, relationship. There's no you don't really feel the love between these two. There's no passion, and I honestly blame Keenan Johnson. I don't really blame the script. I blame Keenan Johnson and his inability to act. Keenan Johnson delivers a really awful performance in this. Gives a whole new meaning to the term wooden. Uh, this is this is a guy who I don't know why he got the role. Must have known the right people because I don't know how he could have done an audition and. D delivered a good enough performance in the audition to get this role uh it sucks because this character is given a good amount of screen time and in the climax of the film it's supposed to this it's supposed to be this emotional uh kind of an emotional explosion so to speak where you're supposed to feel for for hugo and and, and for uh alita and everything and you feel nothing and this character, spoilers, he dies twice in this movie. In the OVA, it's tragic and it's heartbreaking because you actually feel something. But in this, you feel absolutely nothing because this guy is a Disney, Disney Channel reject. He's a Disney Channel sitcom reject in terms of acting ability. And he really does cripple the film in multiple ways. Like He's one of the worst parts of the film for me. Anything involving him really to me is incredibly subpar and below average or just outright terrible and i don't think the script did him any favors either because he's very uh seems like a very one note character so one note performance for a one note character um and yeah the script definitely doesn't have the edge that the ova has but um it tries to make up for it by having like blue blood instead of red and all this other stuff, but it just doesn't quite have the same impact. 
I get what they were trying to do, but they, it should have just been R from the get-go. Then you have some really interesting concepts and ideas, but they're not really fleshed out very well throughout the entire script. And it always feels like the stakes aren't really high enough because there's never really like, it doesn't seem like there's a clear main villain here. Um, I definitely feel the film would have been stronger because of that as well. Cause the villains in this are incredibly weak. I mean, Mahershala Ali, he's spending the whole film trying to do his best blade impression. And he comes across as butter knife. He's not blade. He's butter knife. Uh, he's dull, just like a butter knife. Um, Jackie Rahaley's Garishka is just a CGI monstrosity. He's Robo Abobo. If you've seen a Bobo in the Double Dragon video games or a Bobo in the 90s Double Dragon movie and you you inject him with even more steroids and you give him cybernetic implants, that's that's uh that's Garishka in this movie. He's he's, he's fucking Robo Abobo. And it's just it's, there's really not much to him. He just feels like a, a a a boss for like a video game. There's really it, other than that, there's really not a whole lot there. Jennifer Connelly's character, she's cold and and unfeeling. And by the end of the movie, the film's trying to make you feel for her, and that doesn't work. It's similar to how uh, the uh, one of the main villains, uh, the the actor, I mean the character played by. Vera Farmiga in uh, Godzilla King of Monsters. It's kind of similar to that, where it's like, oh, they're portrayed as a villain for majority of the movie, but then by the end, it's trying to make you feel something. It doesn't work. It's trying to ha it's trying to have its cake and eat it too. And I can't think of any. I really can't think of anything off the top of my head when it comes to a character who starts who's a, a villain for the majority of the movie and then has a turn and they're a hero or trying to paint them as a hero or a good person or a likable character that you're supposed to feel something for when they die i can't really think of anything off the top of my head where that particular dynamic has worked probably for good reason it's not very effective um and yeah, the script it is. It's just kind of a muddled mess, kind of a little bit all over the place, trying to do a romance angle with Hugo and Alita, and it doesn't really work. And then you have the stuff with uh, Christoph Waltz's character, and essentially it's the father-daughter drama that's going on between those two. And then you have another sort of subplot where she wants to play Moto Ball and be a Moto Ball champion, and... Then you have this stuff about her trying to rediscover who she really is. And there are other moments in this where the dialogue is just not really the best either. And then you have like a part near the end where all this is building up to this climax of, you know, Lita finally getting into the motoball arena. And, oh, it's going to be played for real because uh, Vector wants her dead. And it cuts back to this lame subplot involving Hugo and his friends who were jacking cyborgs and it cuts to this this really lame part where he's like talking to his friend and he's like stopping him from jacking a cyborg he's like I'm not doing it anymore man like I'm out and it's like why are we doing this now that we're an hour and 45 minutes in the movie uh, or, or or close to that and, and we're getting this fucking plot line trying to we're trying to solve this thread at this moment that should have been taken care of like way earlier in the movie not try to save that for last and i get it they're trying to do that so it builds up some kind of i guess some drama that alita can focus on other than just the the fact that she needs to try to survive in this battle of survival of the fittest in this motoball game where it's an audition it's supposed to not be, you know, for real, but now it is. And all these motoball players are going to try, are trying to kill her and going for her head. That's enough drama. You don't need the stuff involving Hugo and his friend and him getting, uh, stalked by Zapan. It's not really necessary. Also with the script too, like some of the, the, uh, logic in this script is just a name like for example Zapan can just kill someone with his sword and then just because he says someone else 
killed that person the, in this future that's all it takes that's all it takes for the for someone to have a bounty on their head. It's all it takes for somebody to be considered guilty of murder is to have a hunter killer say, "He did it. He did it. He killed him." Even though Zapan is using like a one of a kind sword that only he has, it's like, yeah, uh, that is some fucking bullshit right there. And the action scene, I will say this about the screenplay and about the film. Um, the When you have some, some action, the, when you have the action sequences, they're actually quite good. I, I like the action sequences. I think they're fluid. I think they're well choreographed. Um, there's definitely a few moments in this movie that got my adrenaline pumping, so to speak, in the action department. Would have been even more... Uh, badass or in uh, or powerful or memorable if it was r-rated if you ask me but for pg-13 action sequences they still pack a decent amount of a punch um and i definitely want to mention the uh visual effects i think the visual effects in this film are impressive i think they are really stupendous i think it's great uh, this film definitely deserves an Oscar for best visual effects. I like the world that this film presents, even though at times it looks it doesn't look as gritty as it should. I mean, the the world presented here kind of just looks like Cuba in the summer, which really isn't. Uh, I don't think that's the kind of dynamic they're trying to have here, where you're trying to set up this uh, world where people want to go up to Zalem. They want to go up to this city in the sky. They don't want to stay on the ground. And the, 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 the city on the ground seems to be really nice and like sunny and, you know, has this tropical vibe to it or Car Caribbean sort of vibe. And it seems like it's a vacation spot. It doesn't really seem like it's so horrible. So they didn't do a very good job set establishing that aspect of um the uh the city of, of iron city um yeah because iron city looks fine to me i don't i don't really think it's it's i don't think zolom is is any better uh zolom just seems like the only thing that makes it better is that it's up in the sky <laughs> um and i can't uh talk about the uh, visual effects without mentioning, of course, Alita herself. I was very leery of this film in a lot of ways uh, because of the effects alone. Like, I was curious about it. I was looking forward to it initially because I knew it was an adaptation of the OVA and the manga. And I really liked the OVA and, and Robert Rodriguez was involved. And that's when I thought it was going to be R-rated. But then it was PG-13. And then my interest kind of waned a little bit. But... I was still curious about the film, and that's ultimately why I decided to check it out uh, eventually, is is because I, I, I like sci-fi and I do like the story. I like Alita. I like Alita as a character. And this film works when it's focused on her. When it's trying to focus on her and Hugo, it, it, it fails. Was trying to focus on the villains, it fails. When it tries to focus on anything else other than Alita and maybe Christoph Waltz's uh, character um, Ito, other than that, it it really is quite lackluster. But there are some really special moments with Alita, and I think the effects on Alita are amazing. Uh, some of the most lifelike CGI I've seen to date. In terms of the skin textures, in terms of uh, the different movements and stuff like that. And I thought Rosa Salazar's performance was phenomenal. I thought she did a really great job playing this character, Alita. Um, there are some moments in it where you can kind of get an uncanny valley sort of thing going on, especially when she shows her teeth or smiles. But even in those moments, I can deal with it because Alita is not supposed to be human. She's a cyborg. She's supposed to look like something that's not quite uh human just yet so having her look like something straight out of the uncanny valley isn't necessarily a bad thing in fact it's something that i i i think is unique to the film and, and makes the film stand out in a good way 
I just wish that it would had a better script. I wish that it had more of a, a harder edge to it because as it is, it's just a pretty mediocre so-so movie with spectacular visuals, with some nice uh, exciting action sequences, a uh, strong lead in Alita, but she doesn't really have a villain that is on the same level as she is in terms of charisma or uh, likability or well, not necessarily likability, but in terms of their ability to resonate with, with an audience. Like these villains, like I said, just butter knife and robo bobo. Like I really could care less. Um, and there are other aspects to it that I liked. Uh, I thought the score by Tom Holkenberg I, I thought it was pretty solid. The film has some nice editing at times by Stephen E. Rifkin and Ian Silverstein. The cinematography by Bill Pope, I think, is pretty uh, impressive in multiple different shots. So, I, Like I said, I like the look of the film. I, I like the visuals in the movie. It's got some nice eye candy. I, I just feel the story falls flat because it doesn't, it doesn't resonate as well as it, as it could because the script is quite muddled and there's a, too many things kind of going on at once and I definitely feel that some subplots could have been trimmed or the focus should have been moved somewhere else and it definitely does it definitely kind of meanders around and doesn't keep your interest as much as it as it as it can because of this just muddled screenplay with all these different things going on at once and you have the lack of a compelling narrative, let alone a compelling villain. You have a compelling lead character in Alita, but you don't have compelling anything else other than the visuals and the visual effects. So it's a film that for me is, is definitely feels fairly cold at times um and that's definitely to its detriment it might seem like it's a rant because i've been talking about like a lot of things about it that i don't like but it's because it's a movie that i personally feel had a lot more potential this this film has a, had a lot of potential and i personally feel it wasted it i personally feel it wasted its potential it didn't live up to its full potential. And that's disappointing. And that's frustrating. And these are the type of films that aren't total pieces of shit. They're not completely without any merits. It, it's just a movie where it's frustrating because you see these bits and pieces that are really good. And they're really tasty morsels they're delicious and you want more and you're just left with scraps and that's just not it's not very satisfying it really isn't i would recommend watching the ova if you haven't yet because that i personally feel the ova blows this movie out of the water um and i know i will get a lot of flack for this but i don't really care i'm gonna be honest i liked the American adaptation of Ghost in the Shell a lot more than Alita. I know a lot of people are saying Alita Battle Angel is the best American film adaptation of an anime to date. And for me personally, I respectfully disagree. If you feel that way, I have no issue with that. But I liked Ghost in the Shell more. I felt Ghost in the Shell, while it wasn't exactly like the anime, which I'm fine with, to be honest. I don't think that's a problem. It had a it was impressive visually, but it had a more compelling story. It was more engaging to me. Uh, it didn't just have nice visuals and a uh, solid lead. It had a stronger antagonist. It had a story that kept me more interested and engaged. I personally feel that film is incredibly underrated. The whitewashing controversy is bullshit because the people involved with Ghost in the Shell, including the creator of Ghost in the Shell, did not have an issue with it. Japanese audiences were polled and asked about how they felt about the casting, and they actually liked it, and they could care less. So, 
I definitely don't agree with the criticisms that Ghost in the Shell is like the the, the American adaptation is like the worst thing ever or whatever. Um, but that's a whole other story. And I've, I've done a review of the film, so if you want to hear my thoughts on that, you can just uh, do a search on my channel and look up uh, my Ghost in the Shell review. But I can understand why people like this one, but I definitely see a lot of the critics reviews i definitely see why a lot of the critics gave it kind of middling reviews because that's how i feel about it it's it's a pretty in the middle movie it's run of the mill in terms of uh too many elements for me but i, I i'm glad i saw it and if i saw it for cheap somewhere i'd probably pick it up on blu-ray because i think it'll look pretty pretty uh great in, in hd and 1080p you know or 4k and like I said, I like Alita. She's not the problem in this. And her and the action sequences and the look and the feel and the visuals, that's enough for me to to make it... It, it makes it a time waster for me. And I definitely want to mention one more time, one, one more thing, uh, not one more time, one more thing before I go, about Robert Rodriguez's direction. His direction in this is fine. It's competent. It's It's okay. It's nothing spectacular, and I think in a lot of ways, it's this is a film that's so dominant with CGI and uh, that sort of aspect that it kind of feels like the director didn't really direct as much. You know, it feels like the the visual effects people did a good a, a bigger chunk of this movie. That being said, I think he handles the film well, but it definitely doesn't have the same style. And flair as Sin City, and and I feel that if this had a similar, not the exact same style and flair, not the black and white, you know, thing like that, but if it had a little bit of that Sin City touch, I definitely feel that this film would have benefited from that. Because at the end of the day, it is it's a sanitized, safe version of Alita, and. That's just nowhere near as effective as the real thing. As the uh, gritty, dark, violent rendition of, of, of the character and of the overall story. But um, if, you, if you're uh, curious about it, I definitely do recommend giving it a look. Uh, if you're not that into it and you weren't really that curious about the film... I mean, other than the fact that if you're a really big Rodriguez fan or James Cameron fan, I, 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 I would honestly recommend skipping it because I definitely feel that you're not going to get a lot out of it. But anyway, I don't know what else to say about the film except if I were to rate it out of five stars. And I would give Alita Battle Angel three stars. Three out of five. Mediocre, serviceable, time waster. Anyway, thank you for watching my review of Alita Battle Angel, and as always, I will see you later. See ya.